AI generative fill has been taking over social media, but my question is, is this effect the only good use for it? Heck no. So I'm going to share with you five more ways you can use AI generative fill in your videos. And make sure you stay till the very end because I've saved the best for last. And we're going to start as soon as you hit that like button. Now, in the last video, I showed you the details of how to use Photoshop's generative fill, but today we're just gonna rip through a bunch of great use cases a little bit faster. Starting out simple, but effective, because I realized last time I totally forgot to show you guys the easiest but most effective way to sell this effect with one simple trick. Let's take a look at this effect right here, the classic one you're used to seeing. It's cool, but it becomes a lot more believable when you add camera motion to your shot. So here's the video that I have of all these different parts of my scene changing. And I did this by taking a screenshot, generating a bunch of fill layers in a row inside of Photoshop beta, bringing that project file into Premiere Pro, and selecting individual layers and then stacking them on top of each other and revealing them in a particular sequence. Relatively simple, but now here's the cherry on top. Add the last touch of movement to really sell that it's in the same world by nesting all of your clips together and then using a simple scale keyframe to fake like you're pushing in slightly on a dolly. It's that simple. This impacts all of your layers identically, so it really sells the effect that what you're looking at is real. And when you pair it with this next tip, it starts to really get effective. And that's to use a story to motivate the change. Just popping things in and out of existence is cool, but by using our story to give it a reason, we can give the effect more impact. Like if instead of popping these pieces into frame, what if we faded them instead? Why would we do that? Well, we would do it if the story motivated it. Let's say that you have a character who's going through a breakup and you film the stuff in their apartment fading away to show that they're about to move, but also to show their deteriorating inner state of being. Except you didn't film all those pieces, you just filmed an empty wall and then added those pieces later with generative fill and then threw them all onto your timeline and added a simple cross dissolve to take them away. It's so basic. But if your story motivates the change, then it becomes a lot more powerful. And by adding a sad music soundtrack and some sound effects to really emphasize the fade away, you're further utilizing the story to convey an emotion and an experience. Story is where the true punch comes from for any effect because you're giving it a reason to exist beyond just looking cool. But okay, maybe you're wanting a more practical use case. So let's use this to make landscape content vertical. This might be the most practical application for a daily basis that I've seen for generative fill because so much of our content these days is repurposed onto these vertical social platforms and no one wants to see this black empty space here. So fill it with something more interesting. And the best part is that it doesn't even have to be crazy or realistic because it's not the focus of the shot. You're actually not adding something cool as much as you're taking away something that was distracting. I've seen people do this for feature films by taking a static shot and generating a fill for the vertical section so it fits on your phone. Who doesn't want to watch a vertical version of Lord of the Rings? That's so cool. But that's a pretty niche example. So I also did this with the opening of my last video so that I could post it on TikTok and Instagram Reels. This is what it was going to look like if I just posted the landscape version and punched in. Gross. You can't even see what I was showing in the shot. So instead of refilming a vertical section for this intro, just select, invert, generate, done. And by the way, if you're using a different editing software than me, you can actually speed up your workflow by just hiding the original layer to have only the generated fill layer present. And then you can export it as a PNG and just drop it over top of your scene in any editing software. And the great thing about this is you don't even need to do any masking now after you drop it in. It's super easy. But you know what's not super easy? VFX cleanup work. Nope, I lied. That's actually really easy too because that's our next tip. Do you have a good looking shot, but there's something annoying or distracting happening in the frame? Well, you can take an example frame and select that section that's not working and generate a cover up so that section looks way better than before. By taking away something that was distracting and at the same time adding something that's more beautiful, your shot goes from like a two to a 10 so quickly. But you don't just have to use it to cover stuff up. You can also get creative with what you're allowed to include in the frame now to just make the shot stand out a little bit more. Like intentionally putting a light into the frame to get a character's face lit the way you want and then generating a fill layer over top of it after the fact. Hollywood used to spend millions of dollars to do this kind of work and now you can do it from the comfort of your own living room. It's amazing. Throw in a subtle little camera shake and no one can tell that there was any trickery. But all these have been for shots that are stationary. Why can't we use AI generative fill for shots that have movement? Oh viewer, oh sweet, sweet viewer, you can. Here's a question. Do you think I paid to fly all the way around the world just so I could get a shot in front of the Eiffel Tower in person? No. 
So then how did I get a shot with me and camera motion and a bird flying across the frame and people walking all around? Well, you can actually merge two pieces of video together using AI fill. Take a shot that you wanna place yourself into and then a shot of yourself on similar terrain. I took a still frame at the start of this clip and then used generative fill to remove all the people and this little buggy here in the front. This makes things so much easier because now I have a blank space to play with and I don't have to worry about rotoscoping around random people. Then filming myself is easy because all I need is a sidewalk or pavement completely surrounding me in the frame. If I take a screenshot from each, and make a selection at the borders of where these two shots meet, what I end up with is a blending of these two shots together. And the best part of why this works so well is because I'm actually interacting with the surface around me and not trying to fake it like a green screen. Tie it all together with some sound effects and some French sounding music, and you have a truly stunning shot right up until you see it pan up and the whole thing is ruined. But as long as your camera motion is a nodal pan, meaning that the camera keeps its same position in 3D space and just looks around like it's on a tripod, you can actually track it in After Effects with a simple 3D camera tracker. And then I'll set these layers to be 3D. And what we're left with is a shot that actually feels like it's under the Eiffel Tower. And what's great is that once all of this work is done, you can create a new scene based on that original screenshot and replace your scene to get a completely unique look just by holding Alt, and clicking and dragging the new element over top of the old one. But the real magic is that I didn't need to go to Paris to film this because I just grabbed it from motionarray.com. And I've left this shot as well as the links to all the other footage, music, and sound effects that I've used in all of these different projects. And if you wanted more details for how to pull off some of the basics of adding AI fill to your videos, then you can check out this video I've already done right here. I'll see you over there.